A sphere is attached by middle wire to a horizontal surface at the bottom of a river as shown in this figure. This is the flow of water. Here we have a sphere and it's attached by a wire uh, in the water. Uh, the sphere is held up and we have it at an inclined angle of 68 degrees to the horizontal surface. The sphere is fully submerged and is in equilibrium with the wire at an angle of 68 degrees to the horizontal surface. The weight of the sphere is 32 newtons and the upthrust acting on the sphere is 280 newtons. So the weight which is acting downwards is 32 newtons while the upthrust which would be acting upwards is 280 newtons. Now they're saying that the density of the water is also specified and assume that the force of the sphere due to the water flow is in the horizontal direction by considering only the components of the force in vertical direction determine the tension in the wire. Now we know that there would be some tension inside this wire T and this tension has two components right a horizontal and a vertical component. This vertical component is the sine of this angle 68 degrees. So if you look at these components and the uh, statement that it says that they are in equilibrium, they can be in equilibrium if these forces are all the vertical sum of all vertical forces is balanced or is zero, right? So from that we can write down this equation that so in the upwards vertical force is 280 newtons. There is no more a force that is acting in the exactly upwards direction and it is balanced by the forces that are acting in the downwards direction that is t sine 68 plus 32. Now you just do the math and solve this for t and t is equal to 270 newtons. For the next part this is for the sphere calculate its volume. So we want to calculate the volume of a sphere we know that the upthrust force, let's call it F, is given by the product of the density times the acceleration due to gravity times the volume in which it is submerged. So from this you can rearrange this equation for V as F uh, divided by rho times G. Now F is the upthrust force which was 280 newtons divided by the density is given as 1.0 into 10 raised to power 3 kilograms per and we have 9.81 meters per second squared. So this would be, if you do the math, 0 0.029 meters cube. Next, we want to compute the density of the sphere, right? So the density of the sphere is, we can use the same expression, F equals to rho GV, but this time, if I want the density of a sphere, I need this, I need the volume of a sphere, and I need the weight of the sphere. This force will be the weight of sphere in this case now, before it was upthrust, right? Corresponding to the uh, density of the water. So if you rearrange this, this gives you F by G times V. And this is, so the weight of the rock uh, or this uh, sphere is what? It's 32. divided by 9.81 into 10 rates, uh, sorry, into 0 0.029. So this gives you the density as 110 kilograms per meter cube. Now the center of the sphere is initially at some height, 6.2 meters above the horizontal surface. The speed of the water then increases, causing the sphere to move to a different position. This movement of the sphere causes its gravitational potential energy to decrease by 77. So the potential energy is decreasing by 77, which means it's a change in the potential energy. Calculate the final height of the center of the sphere above the horizontal surface. Now we know that the change in potential energy is given as the change, uh, the product of mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the change in the height, right? Which means that the change in height is just change in the energy divided by mg. Now what is change in the energy? Change in the gravitational potential energy is decreased by 77 joules, right? So this means that the change is minus 77 degrees. Uh, I keep saying degrees, I think I, I meant joules, right? So 77 joules divided by uh, the weight of the sphere, which is mg, which is 32 newtons, right? So this gives you minus 2.4. Therefore, this is the change in height. We want the final height. 
the final height will be the difference between the two 6.2 meters which is it, it's above minus uh, 2.4 so this gives you 3.8 meters next the extension of the wire increases when the sphere changes position as described in part c the wire obeys Hooke's law state a simple equation that gives the relationship between tension t in the wire and the extension x identify any other a symbol that we use. Now we know Hooke's law states that the force is directly proportional to the displacement, right? F is equal to k times x. In this case, the force uh, on the string is basically the one that is acting on the string is the tension. So the force is replaced by tension and k is a constant times x, which is the displacement. Now, before the sphere changed position, the initial elastic potential energy of the wire was 0.65 joules. The change in the position of the sphere causes the extension of the wire to double, right? So when this change in position happens, the extension of the wire doubles. Calculate the final elastic potential energy of the wire after the sphere has changed position. So when it changes position, the extension doubles, which means that we know that the extension or the elastic energy is half kx squared now we know that uh, we have an equation for f is equal to kx as well we don't know k in this part but we know this equation so we can just substitute for k as f over x right this would become e equals half f over x times x squared so this would become half f times x now we know everything right so it is it would be 0 0.65 into uh, sorry this would be equal to 0 0.65 which is equal to half f times x and now we need to find out the value of x first right the uh, because that's what the, the that's the extension that we want to find uh, it is the previous extension before it's doubled. So if I find the extension, then I multiply it by 2, then I can just double the extension and then uh, compute the, using this expression again, the elastic, final elastic potential energy. So this is half, F is 270, and then you have X. So you rearrange this for X, this equation. So this, let me write it like this. So this would be this thing. And this becomes x is equal to 4.8 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 meters. So that's the, your x, right? Now we need... We can use another uh, method as well, in fact, uh, a relatively simpler method, right? Because uh, we don't need to do any of these calculations. If you just look at this equation, it says that E is directly proportional to x squared, right? The rest is just a constant. Now, what would be the final value of E? Would You can just say that the x is doubled, right? So if, if it was x initially, now it would be 2x. So the ratio of this would just be 2x over x and x cancels and it's just 2, right? So the final energy would be 0 0.65, the initial energy multiplied by the square of the extension, right? Uh, the ratio of the extension, which is 2x by 2, which is 2 squared. So this gives me 2.6 joules.